PMCO Global Finals. It looks like we're going to head into our second match. It's going to be Vikendi. It's going to get nice and chilly in here in Valdez. I know you're looking forward to that. So why don't you guys take it away? <laughs> All right. Our plane is going to start out over Trevno, make its way down over the winery. But this is Vikendi. So smaller map to work with, a lot less surface area. And that team that they showed there in the plane, 46, was going to be the team that I was going to say, not just because they won, but because they were able to breach a compound relatively successfully, and they had the guts to do it. So I thought maybe this team could be the one on McKinney to have some success, but you never know. You got to play the games, and we are getting out of the plane. A lot of teams already out and making their way to their desired drop locations. Plenty of spots to work with on McKinney. Don't have to necessarily just dr drop into one of the big cities. Uh, you know, some of the smaller loot locations are pretty acceptable as well. Absolutely. Uh, you, you do want to spread out. You don't have to go very aggressive early on. Even Jason was mentioning that uh, it's him. The hero <laughs> takes out Trump and, well, we'll have to wait and see what Master and the rest of this squad can do. But uh, I talked about it before. You get that one knock. You got to go in. Master with the Uzi. No, it's empty. get it to be even right now. Able to fill that up with 35 bullets once again, but not the best situation here for 46 loot. Yeah, you can see those nerves maybe playing playing into things a little bit. Again, he jumped when he had no bullets in his gun. Could have taken some damage, and then somebody clips his head there. That could be an uh, instant knock onto him, potentially. And you can see Trump is about halfway down onto his knock. So Master is going to be the one to try to push through, see if he can get the res. Kevin is, I don't think, quite close enough to pounce on this quite yet. Yeah, he's a building over, so he's not really going to be able to get to Trump right away, but Master's just going to bypass him for now. Trump might just end up bleeding out unless he feels comfortable that the other members of 46 can cover this revive. You'll notice that it is going to be an extremely safe, uh, safe rather, revive here from Master. He waits, he thinks, hey, maybe they're going to get aggressive. And down to the last bit of it, he does have that micro Uzi. So in those close quarters, I don't blame him. He can light up a couple of guys as long as the timing is right. So... I like the line of thinking that he did have, and Trump is now back up in time, and we will once again go into this four-on-four four in the compound. It's good patience here by 46. They've got Naya up on the compound to the northeast. That has a huge lane down in here, so he will be able to see any member of Yala that tries to cross into that building. Kevin is going to get spotted if he would have tried to push through there, so a really nice setup by 46, able to get their revive and Trump back up to full health. Yeah, so just taking it easy here. No team is going to make a big move, but we did actually have a couple of knocks here already as members of Nemesis are being knocked down. Escobar will be the first casualty of the game. Yeah, Salman knocked as well. Six in, pushing in hard here. Going to pick up two kills for themselves early on. Three, in fact, excuse me. They have three now. Fragger is the only member to survive from Nemesis. Yep. Just takes a little bit of falling damage there. Just a... Just a little bit of a fracture in the old ankles. He'll be all right. He is going to just get out of dodge, and he's on to KWT here, but Mao has taken a bit of damage himself. Warrior is holding down the corner. He's going to see Mao. Probably going to get the knock. Yes, indeed, he does. Warrior waiting around here. He is going to try to duke it out here. Divine is going to find him, though, but right away, it's going to be Daham getting knocked by Outlaw. And poor Majid, he was the only one sticking back, and unfortunately, all of his members on the team to go down maybe he has one ally up in that uh shack with him looks like he does nasser going to keep him company but a, a nice little aggressive move by kuwait you talked about uh just opening it up uh going into these compounds the the better team at doing that is going to have a lot of success on the and i think you made a make a great point early on valdez that kwt was a team that needed points they didn't get any kills and only that one placement point in the first round and here they've already found themselves two kills trying to see if boss can find it the angle through the corner onto nasser or potentially another member of divine but they are backing off once again as the grenades are going to start flying in the molotovs as well now inside of those buildings those molotovs do spread very very thick so it is hard to avoid them that's what makes molotov so great on vikendi you can really force teams into bad positions just like that as nasser is going to get taken down it's just majid left taking quite a bit of damage switching over to that vector but he is going to be found out and that is divine dusted kuwait just making quick work there of divine vendetta 
And you saw that a couple of the players were confused about where the enemies were. Not, not, not much different here. This is basically about the same. They're, uh, they sent the other two ahead here. You can see them. Oh, no. They might run into the, I don't know if they saw Vendetta here. A little bit of damage taken as they go by, but nothing significant. So they're going to be able to leave Frog ahead. And there is another team up here, 46, if they keep moving through. We've got another fight breaking out, 6N versus MMBEZ. Script, script, waiting at the door with an Uzi, but, but we're now back up. Oh, there is Hunter going to be flushed out, out. That is going to be 6N picking up one kill. Ooh, Scorpion gets found by a nice grenade from a Lord. So we're trading things up here, but MBZZ all stuck inside of this building. 6N is on the hunt. They want to push in here, take the aggressive stand, and try to finish it off. MBZ, I like, like the idea. Nope, nope. Coming up the stairs, he looks around, he hasn't seen anybody. There is one person waiting for him there. He takes a bunch of damage, and it's going to get the finish on the trip. Not really, really much to help him out there. Four on two, once, once again, again this two open frags are going to make, make it easy work. work. The easy Falcons here. here. From the UAE, we are going to be our PT team to be knocked out. out. As, as there hasn't been, been too much, much action, but when it does, does have been in, uh, the team uh, they pay down very fast. They can get themselves a knock on the way to it. Happy once again. KWT, they're coming they're through. through. They're, they're going to have to push another compound. This is what I was talking about. about. You're, you're going to find that side of the candy. candy. You, have you have to be good, good at pushing push compounds. Compound. Compound. Use, use that, that, that utility you have available to you. Those grenade nades to success. XN is able to keep all our alive in that battle. So your compound, you see the mob mob town. One is outside there. That's not going to do too much in terms of making six ends back off of you. And you can see Outlaw. He is trying to find an angle for this grenade. I mean, they take some damage from someone. I'm not exactly sure where they came from. That's got back back off. So he's going to get that grenade in the, into that power window, window, window like, like he, he wanted, wanted to try to, try to force, force 6 and in into a worse, worse position. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's it's a, a, a couple of plays where, where you're just scratching your head, head and wondering exactly what's going, going, going on that time around. Did one go over the top, so we'll push out of the compound now. As I'm going to go in here, I press my by himself, he's going to get knocked down by Lord. Yeah, good, good job, job by Lord staying on that roof, covering the flank. That's exactly what he, what he needed to do. Make sure their backside, backside is clear. He has a ton on of vision from, from up there. He can absolutely watch those things. Like, like, be careful, though. There are, there are so, so many of them in that tight space. There's there one, one grenade. grenade. Could, could spell, spell their, their doom. There it is. Up and in. Will it catch anybody? No, that's, that's just a smoke, actually. actually. That's, that's not a crack or a mob. It, it, it is, is a smoke. smoke. So that's going to block some angles. angles. This could be an, an interesting play, play here by KWT. Oh, oh look, look at this. Circle, circle actually going, going way, way down south. south east and beeping a large, large portion, portion of water, water inside, inside, inside of this circle. circle. So oh, I got wonky ones here on our first handy map. Uh, in, terms in terms of circles so far. far. I, I also noticed that UI had one player that was still out of water, and the other three players, players were just uh, by themselves about the one player, but pushing very far into the inner circle. So, it's a swim strat. Yeah. yeah. It's still swimming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that is uh, the Michael Phelps of, of this uh, lobby. He is out there getting those laps in. Yala is in that battle with GG. Finally, this one is going to be forced to break out here because GG is outside of the circle. They're going to have to push through. That is a nice situation for B8 taking advantage of the shots they're hearing over there. They might try to get in on this fight. No, 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 no. They are just going to bypass this. I think that's probably your wiser decision here. There's only two of you. See if you can get a little more center circle. They play for position at this point because uh, Yala and GG are going to be beating up each other here potentially in just a second. And SNG as well. Driving on in. We'll see, we'll see if they try to get in on the action or if they're just going to be a bit more passive. Try to get some positioning here on this map. Still, once again, taking a look here at 6N. They're kind of, oh, they're going in onto Warrior here. Looks like they should be able to get this knock. He is very, very weak. He's eating blue. He's going to get taken down. Nope, just coming around the corner, seeing if he can flush this. That is going to be down. That is going to be KWT taken out. A good start, but they ran into 6N and weren't able to replicate their success. Bad news for 6N. They're out in the blue. Yeah, absolutely. And so... KWT, kind of sad for them as they go out in 16th and then I believe in 13th, so, or 14th rather. So not much of a, a good shot there. Maybe they can bring it in for tomorrow, but not tonight as coming on in, Yala looking for the kill. So far they have zero on this Vikendi, but FP 
getting ag aggressive in here. Yeah, so FP leapfrogs that Yala GG fight as well as VT, so they are going to bump heads in just a second. And now GG has pushed up. They are able to secure this house for themselves. Yala has a pretty good spread here. Mold it here, and so far, I mean, nobody's going to be that aggressive to try to take it from them just yet, but it really, it can lock you down if the circle is very unforgiving and it goes, you know, let's say all the way south. Then you're kind of screwed because you're running down a mountain into enemy lines, so... I wouldn't call it a gamble, but it's it's kind of a uh, a risk that they calculated, a calculated risk in their minds as some shooting going down here. It looks like Hanky from SMP, left alone there, will be taken out. All right, so SNP and 46 might be fighting each other once again. Find out if that one will continue to rage on as Hanky was kind of on his own, a bit spread out from the other members. VT rolling up on MEA. See what they've got in the tank this time, if they can defend this push, or if this is going to be VT's time to shine. Moha's got that UMPs. He's coming up the stairs. He did not check that bathroom. There you go. Now he's putting some shots through. Seeing if he can find the members of MEA that are up on top. Smokes are coming through. I think that was a frag grenade there to try to back off VT. A great Molotov up on that roof. Completely blocks in VT. They can't get up and over there. They have to wait for that to go. Now they're, now they're moving through again. Now that that Molotov is gone, Syed is over there. You can see him on the backside of Kaito in the front. And over to FP versus UI now. Take a look at that circle. Uh, Arab Manus, they're feeling pretty good about that one. It's very close to them so they can mix up their position. The mountain, of course, going to have many other places to hide and seek and be good and stay alive as entering the compound now is GG, but Yala holding it down for now. Yeah, Yala's taking quite a bit of damage, and it's going to be Zero who does get knocked here. One member of GG is very, very hurt. AZ might try to pop around this corner with this Uzi, see if he can pick up two members. They're right in the corner. It is going to be both of them found out and down. GG two down. Zayko trying to hold the stairs. He has to back up. The blue is here as well. So AZ and the others trying to push up through the stairs. That is going to be one down. Can he hold off this final member that is trying to get through? Zayko is very, very weak going for the heels because now Yala is going for the revive. I like the safe play from Yala. Just try to back it up as things were getting out of control in this compound. Zico now, the only one left alone, doesn't really have a kill just yet. Finally picks up one, but can he make it happen 1v2 or even 1v3 if the reses do get off here? That is the question about how much risk he wants to take. Do you go now? Or do you wait and try to catch them off guard? All right, Master trying a grenade and not succeeding. He's got an AUG, which means they found a crate somewhere along the way. So a little bit of extra utility available. We always talk about that. That's so important. Moha's got a good angle, and he is going to find one member at his crom there. But Master has found somebody. Naya's just pushing through here, absolutely doing work with that AK, but he's out of bullets, and he is going to get knocked himself. Grave going down. So it is going to be 46 that is able to hold through. They've got two members knocked. Let's see if they can get them up because we are going to wait on that and go over to MEA Vendetta. You can see confirmed they are down. As you guys can see, well, another fight coming out here. MEA having a lot of trouble. V8 trying to make it happen. Tiger not quite able to get that kill. It looks like he Ooh. just get it on the backside. Oh, sorry, I didn't think he was going to get that, but somehow he does. He has no health. He is holding on by a thread. Bam, trying to come up and through 6ND. They have found Arab Madness. It is M7 down and another member down. So B52 is going to drive in that U.S. and pray he can make it out. He is taking a bunch of damage. There are other teams in front of him as well. He is able to stop up, though, just before that U.S. gets smoked. He's going to be able to find time to get that first aid. Pretty huge for him. He is, I believe, the only person left alive. There's one guy who's knocked, but if you could just hole up in a shack and try to wait it out, you know, improve your position by three, four, even five teams, that would be ideal. But let's take a look at this next, next circle. Where is it going to head? Over to the northeast location. Yeah, no man's land over there. Not really any compounds to work with, so that's going to be an interesting situation. It's going to be fast and furious, but that is going to be the members of Arab Madness found out and taken down. They are going out in ninth place, so a couple more kills. 
going the way of 46. They've got six already, so they're already building on that success they had in the first game. Oh, that's a really nice situation for them. They were granted a good circle, but good teams take advantage of good circles and get the points they can. Exactly, and that, uh, that differentiation we were talking about between some of the teams, you know, who is going to be the top of the table here for the MENA teams. We're beginning to get some answers to that as we see a couple of teams showing their faces twice in a row. Taking a look at 6N, they have taken the mountain for now, but Walid trying to lay down some fire. Right, we've seen 6N do a good job defending their positions. They've got Lord up ahead in a 1-3 split. He's going to be the front man, getting the recon inside of the circle and securing that location for them as the other three members are going to try to make their way over. Yala, two members left after that battle between them and GG. Now, GG did back off. They sent one member out on his own, try to pick up some placement points. SNT, still four strong. They were center of the circle. Now the center left them just a bit going to see how they want to set up into this next situation in front of them as 46 is in front of them as well. You can see Zagert is up on that hill and he has got a pretty nice little vantage point up there if he kind of creeps forward and maybe he'll be able to spot out 46. Not too sure exactly how much vision he's going to be able to get and here goes Yala making their way around and UI is out here. This is the guy who is swimming. This is our Michael Phelps and finally he's out of the water back on land. Let's see if he can get something done. Looks like not just yet, but they have locked down Yala here. The first knock is going to come in for this team as UI catching them off guard here. But now Naya from a different location going to pick up a couple of knocks himself. All right, Naya is putting some serious damage in. That is going to be UI down and out. Really nice job by 46 once again. Hearing the fight over there, immediately pouncing on top of it and picking themselves up some more big kills. That is nine total. SMP has gone down in the back of this. So our second place team from last round going out in sixth place this time. Ooh, circle right there on top of two teams in the Northwest. As fighting has broken out here. Dobby, he's got eyes on 6N, but they've got a little bit of work to make it into the circle. Onto the bottom of this hill, so it's not so bad, but Dami going to start them off well here for 6N. Yeah, Zagurt is going to go down in the middle of this circle, tried to make his way up. And so 6N, I believe it was 6N, somebody found him as he tried to get the forward position for SNT, but pays the price for it. That's what makes it different. Yala is going down there as well. So... 6N with 17 big kills. They have been just absolutely tearing teams apart. Saw them do it to KWT and some others. So let's see if they can finish this one strong. Four members up for them. Four members up for 46. Ooh, Naya is going to get outdueled by Sultan with that AK. See if they can get that revive going. But they got to be careful. They're all grouped up there. Somebody could get a good grenade up and over. They might be able to take him down. Not sure if Sultan has one. He's got a molly, though, so that's going to come through. Maybe make this a little more difficult for them. Not really going to do the damage he was looking for, but will at least do some zone control. The circle now pushing on in. SNT, awkward spot. They do have to push in against two, three teams that are trying to lock them down. As, wow, we still have good game in here. It is only Minshar by himself. Just slowly trying to prone on up into the circle. All right, Nope's got a barrel trying to come down the hill and an M4 in his hands. There is a lot of smoke coming out now as these teams, like I said, there isn't a lot of compounds or anything like that in here. So to make your rotations, you got to get some smoke down, try to push on through those, die, trying to hold down an angle here. But it is going to be Nope who is found out by Dobby. Nice shooting there with that M16. He's going to push himself out because of, I think there was a grenade that came in there, and that is going to be him down. So... This has been an amazing round for 6N, but they are one down, and Die is out in the blue taking some damage there. He's going to push on forward. 46 got some cover to work with. Trump's putting some shots in, but he's going to get caught from behind. Tony Master left available. They have 10 kills total, but take a look at this. 6N with 19. Even if they go down here, it's not the end of the world just because of how many kills they have picked up. As SNT, in contrast, one kill for this team. Able to get a knock here, but Walid in a lot of trouble. Oh my god, 20 kills here for 6N. This is an absolutely monster round. Finally, Dami goes down here. Master trying to hold down this angle, but he is going to get taken out himself. So 6N is going to go out. And they tried their best. So does 4-6, fourth and third place, respectively, for them. It looks like this 
could be it for Menshar. He is surrounded on two different angles by Sultan. Going to have to try to outduel him. Is going to go for this first aid kit. Waleed yeah. is uh, knocked here for SNT. So it's actually a 1v1. Shout out to Minshar, who made it happen by himself. Taking some shots now onto Sultan and moving forward into the smoke. Sultan is going to take him out. 39 for 46 loot. ST was, I believe, 13th place at the end of game one on 23 points. They take home 24 here, rocketing them into fifth place. Almost secured themselves a spot into the final day. That was a phenomenal performance, and that's what the effect of winning. And we're heading to Aaron Gill once again. Valdez and Paper Thin, take it away, boys. All right, here we go. Group B time. Only two more games left to go. Once again, one more Arangel and then a Vikendi coming at you. So this plane path, a little less forgiving than the first one we saw today. This one's going to be more northerly based. We're starting out over Lipovka, heading over Razak, ended up over Georgia Pole. So once again, if you want to go south, then again, Primorsk, uh, going to be a little bit more tricky to get to. Uh, otherwise, a lot of the northern part of the map very much in play, of course. So keep an eye on what teams want to do here as this one is uh, bound to be a very, very tough fought map. Yeah, it doesn't really get more competitive than this. We have brought uh, all the national teams out here from many different regions uh, coming in here. 16 of the best. So uh, very excited. We, we talked a lot about the favorites, you know, RQ Athene sports, very obvious choices, but... How about some underdogs that you think might have a chance? I mean, Box Gaming was coming into the interview and they were just right from the get-go calling people out and saying, hey, you better be careful of Box Gaming. If you run into us, you are going to die. You think that's their goal and just look behind and try to gatekeep a little bit there. He did have another knock as he does get taken out there. Lapis from ARW is going to be the first player dead from that Japanese squad. All right, well, not, not move, move too much. much. Looks like they want to get some cars around as that. the first, first grenade is going to come, come in and pick up a kill. I, I wonder how much Box realizes they have no rage completely blocked in here. here. No, no rage is surrounded on all sides, on all sides, and it's exactly why they've got smokes coming up. They're, they need to defend this position. Look at this, another knock already. Loki trying to come around the corner with, with the M16. See if he can finish off Helios a little bit more damage. And now Box knows that, that this is real, real bad here for no rage a lot of damage coming through the grenades are in there and in fact that that is going to be no rage down taken out here as our first team eliminated unfortunately as uh, they were from germany so we're going out there for our boys from germany but take, take a look i mean you'll notice that even though we are here and the third circle we haven't really uh, had too many teams going out just yet i mean there's 59 guys still alive on the map yeah, not, not too, too, too surprising you might see a team go out early on, but this hard shift is going to make things a little more interesting. That eastern side of that circle is going to be dicey. It is very exposed. Those chopsticks that I was talking about on the southeastern part of the circle are going to be very, very valuable for a while. That compound that Top Esports has as well it can be very powerful to try to control some of that situation if you can catch some of those teams in transition. Unique there is moving on up. They have the center position. They have Gatka. And uh, that is definitely where you would like to be right now. Good start for them as one of the members here from Elementrix. It's going to go down. Junior taken out here from the side by Entity Gaming from India. So getting on up there, Poopa Man losing one of his allies so far. Yeah, Entity got to be one of the favorites coming into this fifth at the PMCO Fall Split Grand Finals. So they're definitely a force to be reckoned with. TQ still trying to hold down the northern part of the chopsticks. And now Box has moved up and over. After dusting, no rage, they are coming in. And those grenades, they can funnel into this circle pretty nicely. And it does a bit of damage there to Marco and Axial. They aren't down, but they are weakened. So if you can get these grenades to roll in on right, you can start getting some knocks and potentially try to push up over that hill. Some counter grenades coming through, though. Getting Box to back off, getting them to move their vehicles back, trying to keep them safe, trying to keep them out of grenade range. Yeah, very curious to see how Box is going to attack that position. But once again, over to Gonzo here, who is going way up towards that northwest position. Doesn't look like he has too many friendlies with him. He's all alone up here. 
And he's getting shot. Not looking good for Gonzo. Yeah, he's going to have to prone. He took a bit of damage, and he's trying to be the scout for his team, trying to find a way to get in on the western part of the circle. But he is going to find one knock there. It's going to be Zessi. Here comes a run over. Solke is down as well. Nicola pushing through here. He should be able to finish this off. No, he's getting backed up, taking a ton of damage. He gets knocked himself from side. There are is a lot of teams fighting over here. EGC from the south putting in a bunch of damage. A nice attempt here by Goskilla, but it goes sideways because of the angle that EGC has. Yeah, I like the idea at first, but you can't do that when there's this many teams left available. I mean, you're going to be shot from multiple angles. That's exactly what happened and happened there. But I do like their uh, ability to get back up on their feet. Not going to go down without a fight rezzing in the smoke. Wow, this is really aggressive stuff here from Goskilla. I might have been tempted to just back off of this one, but a really nice job by them to get the smokes down, cover the angle so EGC can't see them, and push on through. Get, at least get into the circle for now. They really need to bust into this compound that the Japanese team has above them. AR, ARW is only three strong, and it is the better position. If they can get up and in there, they should be safe-ish for a little while. And you can see they're trying to push up. That is going to be one knock. Mato, or excuse me, Matteo does get the knock and the flush on the Nicola. So now three is more shots coming in once again from EGC. You can see EGC just knows if they keep putting shots into this smoke, they can keep getting knocks. Hey, yeah, take a look at the health bars there as we will also take a look at the circle down towards the bottom side. Your chopsticks finally going to be pushed away from that circle, but still a decent amount of cover on the outside. The middle, though, very field heavy. We'll see who is going to make that first play. Yeah, and this really stinks here for Goskilla. You don't want to blow up these vehicles that early, but they have no choice. They need to make static cover because they're basically out of smokes. Would have been nice if they had some smokes to get up on top of the hill so they could have pushed onto AR, but now the circle has gone south like you were talking about. They're no longer in it. Box still in a fight, but now here comes RRQ Athena. There is tons of damage being done. Box is very, very weak. If that grenade is on the mark, that could be some more. Yes, that is going to be one down, another knock. This is a great push from RRQ Athena. All right, D2E, he does get knocked himself. Senior and Ernie trying to back him up, seeing if they can get the res. And Box, they do finish them off. A great push here by RRQ. Yeah, D2E a little bit unlucky there with the weapon swap, but you do like to uh, highlight that push. Fantastic timing there from RRQ, but now VIP in a bit of trouble trying to fight them off. Top Esports now actually being knocked a bunch. What in the world? There are four teams here. Queso, Top, VIP, Red Cannons, all here, all fighting for this position. Of course, it is an amazing spot in the circle, and it is on the southeast part where so many teams were. VIP is in here. Tons of damage being done. They do get the knock on two members. Oh my gosh, everybody is taking everybody down. This is absolute chaos. The cannons so far are holding out the best. Yeah, looking pretty good for them as Elementrix trying to make their way now into the mix. Taking out a bunch of low members. Maxin going to go down. Yeah, okay. EX comes through here. They do find themselves, despite losing Junior early, because they found the benefit of being the late party to this massive, massive fight. Ooh, but Ben V has a smoke down. This could be tricky. Does he know the dragon is in front of him there. Or excuse me, drag me. And I don't know. Ben V's just waiting. He's got some heals. He should be should be maybe doing one more bandage there to see if he can get a little bit more, more health going. And he hasn't moved. I'm not sure if the members of Elementrix know he's there. The smoke is there, so I assume they suspect something could still be up. You can see they're being very patient about this. Yeah, very slow trying to get on top of Ben V here. Not going to let this one go down. Uh... They're, they're not going to let any of their members go down when it's three on one. They do also have to deal with uh, TQ and Top Esports over there. Team Queso trying to take down Kisker by himself in the building. All right, still, okay, finally, Ben V is cleared out of there. And we are going to see another circle. It goes way up north. So Gonzo has found his way somehow into the middle of this circle in all of this chaos for Go Skilla. The last surviving member for them. And right next to that, so it's going to give away his position a bit. Queso is going to do some running and gunning. They're going to try to find a way up and 
into this circle early, which is again, another field finish here, Valdez. And oh, yep, there's top esports down. So maybe your favorite coming into this one goes down very early in 10th place. 10th place is going to be way earlier than we expected for top esports. But Team Queso, look at the guts on them just making a mad dash into the middle of the field. They find one rock. They have a couple of vehicles. If they can set up a little box there, they're going to be A-OK -okay to move into the final rounds. All right, C9-4, strong, unique up on the side there. Zute going to have to push through. Got that micro Uzi. There's four in this building. The circle making its way towards them. They have a little bit of time, but it's going to be a fight between them and the Russian team, Team Unique. As the Unique has, ooh, Kitsune is going to get knocked here by Uneven. Uneven's coming through that circle once again right behind them. Old Boy does just opt to go for the res. Some grenades coming up and over. Seeing if they can find some more damage in there. And there is going to be Pira getting taken down here by Rogue. So he gets flushed out and C9 is looking a little out of source now. But now they've got Unique dead to rights. Three are stuck behind this corner. There is only one member left. Yasha has pushed out far ahead, but a grenade or something. Yes, indeed. A grenade from Yasha. Can Yasha do this? Yes, indeed. It looks like Yasha is going to pick himself up some big kills and keep Unique's hopes alive. That is just unbelievable, especially because he kept one of his allies alive with him. It looked like there towards the end. Might have died as he was knocked, but an incredible play going over to the side of Team Unique. Man, <laughs> this is awesome. We get to see these prone players with these DPs just outdoing everybody. In the back end, Queso is going down, so that's a bit disappointing for them. They still had four strong, looking like they were going to try to take an aggressive early center circle, but sometimes that doesn't pay off in these field circles. It's really hard because a bunch of teams come up behind you and just kind of there isn't a lot of cover to work with. Fox from Evos is in the smoke with four members of EGC who have fanned out along the western edge. We weren't sure exactly what to expect from this Korean squad EGC, but they have shown a very strategic, fun style here. Uh, I did curse one of them as Foxy is going to take out that first knock here in the middle. Yeah, and then Foxy goes down himself. Now we're finding another. Oh, my goodness. We are just... We are going, now we're going over to these. This has been back and forth, back and forth. Anybody who seems to go center circle is not <laughs> faring very well for it. Foxy's trying to crawl away, seeing if he can get anything going because EGC is opting to go for the revive. Ooh, a grenade right in the front of this. Almost gets beside there. And you can see back behind them, there is one member left. That love in there from the football team. Take a look here at RRQ. Oh, uh, we haven't seen them too much after their earlier success. Looks like they're three strong as EGC. Kind of a questionable decision not to shoot him on his way out as Foxy was uh, going for getting rezzed here. He is now by Hizra, and they're in the smoke, so Evo's not out of this one just yet. Great position in the circle. How is Gonzo still doing this? Like, people have to know he's there. That buggy is a clear dead giveaway that somebody is sitting in that spot, but nobody's been able to push through again. Field circles make it hard to move forward. Evos, Foxy, you're right. They didn't punish this. They are potentially going to get the revive here if there aren't any more grenades. Bear does have that AWM available with that ghillie suit, so he's going to be even harder to spot. As, yep, well, there's that revive. <laughs> Idra is able to come back and get his teammate back. So I think that is a bit of a misplay here by EGC. Definitely should have been able to finish and capitalize on that. You can see Lovazin is in the back once again. All right, here we go, RRQ. It is going to be G9 finding B side. So now EGC might be paying a little bit. They tried to flank out wide, and it's going to be RRQ who's going to take advantage of it. Yeah, EGC definitely an interesting kind of set of plays and RRQ taking advantage of that right now and even go skill Gonzo is just racking up the kills for his team in the middle as you did mention him finally Yasha looks like is going to be taken out nearly uh, it does get knocked there by Ernie on this side of the map yeah Ernie will be finishing him off and unique Yasha with a nice job keeping his team alive getting a sixth place finish eking out as many points as he can finally Lovazin is found out there so footballist 
they are going to be taken down. And Ernie's just spraying through whatever. He knows there's quite a few players still alive in this lobby. So there's going to be a lot of snakes in the grass. No reason not to see if he can find anything for his team. Bear has some bandages left, but he is just opting to stand still because if you do if you do the bandage animation, you might get spotted out as you're moving around. Yeah, he's the only one left available for EGC as well. So he can't really afford to get spotted out here. He's just gonna play it extremely passively. Try to get, you know, fourth or third place in this one, not necessarily going for the kills. So we'll see what he can do. Finally gonna use that bandage here. There he goes. Yeah, now he feels safe enough to try to pull it off and probably should be okay. Ernie's crawling up and forward. So this one's going to be a bit slow now because we're waiting for the circle to close. And then all these players trying to just find any kind of bush or tall grass to put themselves down in. See, Bear is now crawling forward. He's got Gonzo up there. Is Gonzo going to continue to just defend the center uh, position circle very, very well. Fox takes a bit of damage. I think Bear might have found him out. Yes, indeed. Bear with a really nice shot with that AWM. He can't get that last uh, shot to go, and he doesn't quite finish that kill on to Foxy. So that's a bit. It was a really nice shot to begin with, but now Bear's going to get taken down by Gonzo. He does end up getting Fox in the end, but that was damn close. Really had a hard time finishing him off there, so... Makes it a lot harder here for Evos, who only has Hezra all the alone on the west side of this circle. All right, there is Poopo Man crawling through, surviving for Elementrix. Gonzo is a one-man wrecking crew. Finally, because he has to stand up to pick up that kill, gets found out by Ernie. Ernie's going to pick up one more. Can he get another? Poopo Man stands up. Poopo Man gets right back down, knowing full well that that cannot go well. Ernie goes down, and that is a big, big win for Elementrix. Ruby, it's brought to you by Valdez and Paper Thin. Aw, oh, we get to sponsor things. Aw. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Vikendi, this was a fun one last time. Let's see if this one kind of pops off again and the plane is going to start. Basically the same plane, except it's starting over the winery and going to Trevno this time instead of the other way around. So we'll see if the circle wants to do something similar. I kind of doubt we're going to have another brutal Southwest circle. All of our circles so far have been Southwest. Let's see if we can roll the dice a little bit here, Valdez, and get something a little yeah. different going. I want a little variety in my PUBG mobile. Yeah, I mean, I know Southwest Sauce is a good sauce at, at Subway, and the airline is pretty good too. But I'd like to I'd like to see something else here on this map as well. I, I'm 100% with you, and uh, again, we have to wait and see like which one of these storylines is going to come true. Can uh, Elementrix with the famous Poopo Man come in here and pick up another win on top of a lot of the kills that they <laughs> kind of missed out on in the first map, even though they did get the chicken dinner. Or, uh, well, speaking of which, we are going to have a bit of a... Oh, Beowulf. Yeah. Okay, he's got <laughs> he's got to be pretty careful. Now, they could opt to try to go back for it. They're not going to. I figured once, you, you basically get one shot at that with the UAS. It's not very fast. The turn radius isn't great on it. So um, that might be a kill here for Rogue. He's going to leap over that wall. Looks like he was able to catch Eagle, who was trying to bomb into this compound. That is another devastating loss for top esports. That's a mistake you do not want to make early on, just losing one of your guys as he is out scouting. The rest of top esports just going to run uh, with their tail between their legs and say, we will come back to fight another day. But we've seen so many firefights, four on three teams that push extremely aggressively once you get that first knock and that's going to be TES for the rest of the game essentially. Well it's kind of what happens with these 1-3 splits, this high risk high reward when you send one player way out of the other team to do the scouting a lot of times but then gets found out can they get the revive here he's got a rock to work with or are the red cannons going to pounce on top of this no it is going to be Rogue who does get confirmed by Marco. That's a rough spot once again, just trying to drive on through, but getting sniped out there with the headshot by Red Cannons. We didn't see Red Cannons all too much in game number one, but you can see they're getting aggressive. They're shooting at all the cars, and now they're pushing on in to try to clean it up what they started. Yeah, they don't want Unique anywhere around this. Maxson does trade one for one here with Unique. Natowski coming around with his own 
Micro Uzi trying to see if he can get inside the house. He catches the backside of Old Boy. Old Boy comes around and gets another knock for himself, but he does end up getting found out. A dangerous push here for the Red Cannons, and they have one member. I mean, excuse me, now they have one member standing as Box is now getting in on this action. So some early hyper aggression from these teams. So many teams just heard the action and they're like, okay, uh, let's get in there, you know, pick off some kills. If you can just get a couple of free kills from outside when you're not even fully committing, essentially for free, that is the money right there. And we saw a lot of teams, they heard the shots fired and they wanted to get in on the action. A lot of teams uh, picking up kills in there, but no team specifically going down. Keep in mind, Kitsune did get away from this fight for Unique. And this is not, once again, how this Russian team wanted to start this. You know, we, we said at the beginning, they're considered probably the strongest team in Europe. Oh boy, careful, careful. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> just, just moving them around a little bit, just using those tires to push them up and in there. And they're gonna be able to get Max and it looks like, I'm a little shocked here that Box maybe didn't think about trying to push down that hill, but maybe they didn't feel like it was worth getting a little over aggressive. Yeah. And in fact, you know, there's no rage coming up on the backside of them. So the information available for his team so they can try to make the best decision they can um, going into the next circle. As we're just, just biding our time. This one takes a little bit to close on up here. And right now, Junior throws some Molotovs, but he hasn't caught anybody. Okay, he's gonna come around the corner. He takes some damage. Yeah, can he out duel? Yes, indeed, he is going to find good. And oh, but now Louis is coming up to give him some help with that silent micro Uzi. Is Orange gonna be able to come in and kind of return the favor? But Junior does get uh, killed, eliminated. So that's one member down here for Elementrix. Yeah, I like the original aggressive play, but it, it looks like he didn't really know that the enemy was there in the player layer on the box. So now he goes down the rest of his team into like, come on, man, we weren't ready for that one. And you were talking about a metaphor to even know that the And they leave elementaries to their own devices. Right, right, and Hannons aren't really able to make them pay too much for that. Now they're taking some damage. Now Louie is actually going to be C9. Who's going to find him? Now Maxi's seeing if he can find the foot. On to Louis. Louis. Louis is able to get just far enough down there. Corner smokes are going to come down. Trying, trying to get Maxson up and running again. And we'll see, we'll see if he is indeed able to do that. Comes out the window. No. Meets his friend. And I think they're going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Getting, getting a, a good angle here. And just making sure they have cover. So it doesn't look like Louis is going to take too much damage at the end of it. Great nearby. It seems like... Uh, towards the east side of the new circle, but they're very out in the open, so it might be a rough one for any of these teams to make a play at. Yeah, curious to see if RRQ wants to try to make a play at that. Here, here comes Goskilla, who had a very nice round in the back of, you know, <laughs> the, the one guy, the one man who was left for, or excuse me, Yasha, uh, for Unique was over there. Uh, for, he went against Cloud9, but Goskilla, that was a different situation for them. And that was Gonzo, who is also not my favorite Muppet. I was going to say that, and then I was like, no, nope, that's not true. My favorite Muppet, Valdez. Yeah, I like the Grouch. The Grouch. Yeah, yeah he's, he's uh, a good one for me. I'm curious to see how they want to approach this circle. There is that bridge over there. The red cannons are going to be waiting in the compound that is to the west. And it is, and we have found it thanks to our hero, Jason, it is Ralph. That's right, Ralph the dog. That is it. Thank you, Jason. You're my hero. He's pretty awesome. I like I, I like to you know music as a kid. So yeah, yeah, big fan myself. As Gozkilla, in a bit of trouble, has teams ahead of them, behind them. Not much cover as well around these tents. Yeah, it's there. Just isn't a lot going on over here for Gozkilla, outside of the city. That's the most likely, and therefore you can play gatekeeper there. You get all the information on the outside. Usually you want to be on the edges of the cities if possible. Take a look at uh, VIP just holding down the mountain. We've seen some teams do that well, others not so much. Top Esports, rough position here, being shelled from it looks like multiple different angles, and now they have to get inside the circle, but a knock to start us off. All right, that is going to be one down. There's other battles starting to rage out. So I was saying this circle tightens up. There were too many outside of it, and they've got to get in. Top Esports is taking a bunch of damage 
from the circle. They've got the U.S. I don't know if they have enough time to get in here. They are very, very hurt. I'm not sure if this is going to, yes, indeed, they are going to find death. They cannot get through. Footballist is eliminated in the back of all this as well. And you can see Tovach is full of a ton of teams. EJC somehow going down as well. So a lot of teams are finding their fate now as the circle is going to go middle. C9, once again, is the beneficiary. As you were talking about, so many teams over there by Tovac now butting heads. 13 teams left, and we are here at one of the end circles. Not much time for either, or any rather, of these teams to uh, make a big play just yet. But VIP, I like their position up on the mountain. Going to be inside the circle. Let's hope they don't get sniped down. I like VIP's position. I like RRQ's position. RRQ set up exactly what I was talking about. On the northwest part of Tovach in a 2-2 split, they are going to be able to, if they're able to execute properly, uh, really make the teams that are having to rotate outside of Tovach pay. VIP looking to put some shots down with that G36. Yakuza trying to get a few dings in. Nothing really catching for him. Trying to put that fishing rod out, but no bites. Here we go, back to Ghost Skill. Agonzo, can he do it again? It's going to be him against Elementrix, potentially, or, you know, Hyozu might just let him go by, but Orange is up here. He's gonna try to cook a grenade, see if he can bounce it down the stairs. Maybe, 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 this could be good, but no, he's gonna put it back in his pocket. Nobody was coming up, he didn't hear the footsteps, so he's thinking, nope, don't wanna do that. Yeah, that's the best way to do it, guys, for you guys at home wondering, just cook the grenade, he can put it away. I was able to do exactly that, but he still is in a kind of rough spot here on top of this building. Uh, good scouting though, at the end of it all. And he's gonna be able to hear exactly where that team does end up going, go Skilla in the middle of this town. All right, red cannons were just a bit outside of the circle. Now, this compound that they're moving up towards now is going to be inside of the next circle just a bit, but most likely it is not going to stay that way. So for now, they're just trying to set up, keep themselves alive, see if they can outlast some of these other teams, try and get a better placement point for themselves. You can see Go went down for box there. He got knocked. And will the confirm, oh, Box is uh, taking some damage here. Marco as well gets knocked. So Evos is putting the hurt onto the Vietnamese team and you've got VIP up here lobbing some Molotovs and this is looking very difficult for Box now. Haiku has that car 98, seeing if he can find some damage. Sai spraying in and that is going to be Evo's very, very beat up. Skyzy goes down and what a bad situation for them and Box to be in. And here, here we go, the battle finally between Go Skilla and Elementrix. Elementrix to go down in the fight. It's just Poo Poo Man left. Poo Poo Man is out. He's going up the stairs. He's not really interested in this battle. At this point, now Poo Poo Man needs to be the solo hero for Elementrix. Yeah, I don't mind his position. He's going to be able to just back away. It would have been real bad if he got knocked down as well there and taken away. But the circle closing in, making a push out here. Looks like uh, one of these teams towards the left side of this wall as Ghost Killa Still in an okay spot, as you see, but the, the circle now is going to be the real killer for this team. Yeah, everybody in Tovach, is, this is what happens when you go into cities. A lot of times the circle leaves you, and then you are in a world of trouble. Team Queso doing a good job. They maneuver into the center of the circle. We saw this last time, but they weren't able to defend it. VIP up on the high ground, doing a great job punishing all these other teams that cross their sight lines. Ben V, some more shots from up there. I gotta wonder how much darn ammo they have because they are just shooting at everything. And there is RRQ right below them. So Ben V probably knows that. He's gotta be really, really careful. He's just trying to see if he can pick up a few kills onto No Rage, the German team from up here. But again, VIP still in the circle. They've got to worry about Box coming up behind them. And there you go. No Rage has nothing but a blown up Dacia to work with. And actually, it's you know, it's not that bad. It, it's, uh, it's given them a lot of cover for now, but they do have to move in towards that circle. You were talking about the seventh circle and 11 teams left available here on the map. So everybody's desperately trying to hold on to their positions on this Vikendi where it can be so rough 
to get aggressive into these compounds. Yeah, the cannons are trying to be patient and waiting for the teams that have to cross in front of them to get into the next circle to do so, seeing if they can pick up some kill points. Uh, it's going to be really challenging for them to get into the next circle. So I think this is a smart play. Set up on the edge of the city and just go for any of the points you can possibly get. A decent grenade attempt there by Poo Poo Man. That almost catches a member of Ghost Skilla. He's going to start healing up. Here we go. Ghost Skilla coming on through. They are in that house, but they are very, very weak. No Rage is getting beat up by VIP up on the mountain and RRQ as well. So RRQ even gets an angle on them now to make matters worse for them. Put some salt in the wound. No Rage is going to go down. And this is getting really, really dicey on the southeast corner. So many teams down here, and the blue is just going to chunk them through. I'm a big fan of RRQ's position right now. They cover their flank. They pick up a bunch of kills, seven total now. They move up the hill into the circle, and now they're going to pick up even more. Yeah, this is great play by RRQ. Patient, disciplined play is going to pay off for them. Ernie on the back flank, though. He is able to cover it, but it, he is going to get... Uh, high cool, but Ben V is actually going to find Ernie. So, bit of damage traded between those two teams. Let's see if they can find the res. You can see seniors just shooting up and over, trying to protect their teammates as they get the smokes down, looking to try to find the revives. But Ben V, not real interested in letting that happen. Unique is down in the background as well. So a lot of teams falling down. The Canids fall to the blue. There was nothing they could do. They were completely boxed out. That mountain just covers everything with VIP and RRQ up there. Oh, C9. Trying to make a play through the smoke. They're going to make a run for it. But so many members getting knocked out there. A couple and the car is going to blow up. That is not what you wanted to see for C9. What incredible shooting by Axial. He rips two members right out of that vehicle. Back over to Ben V, who's got the high ground on top of RRQ. RRQ just trying to see if they can get that revive once again. Ben V doing a great job. But now here comes the Japan squad. The all rejection team is up here and trying to get up and over. And oh no, RRQ. RRQ getting flanked by Team Queso as well. So, so many smokes having to be used. They've still got a little utility in the bag there. Now Ben V is in a bit of a trouble. Last member left there for VIP trying to hold this angle. But, man, this is going to be so tough. ARW, if they play this right, should just be able to swap yeah. him out. They have the best position right now, even better than RRQ. And I'm even at a loss for how they made it up there. But Ben V gonna take one with him at least will be taken out here at the end but he gets the kill on to lapis so probably the best he could have gotten in that position yeah absolutely getting one kill there is fantastic but now arw's got to duke it out with rq crazy gory he's gonna go down uh we've got a couple members from each team going down here it's gonna be dg98 he goes down ayala trying to up and over with a grenade from Team Queso. They're trying to third party this fight. Senior is knocked here. Some damage being done. Ayala pushing forward, knowing full well that he's got RRQ on the run, but AR is behind him as well. He didn't really realize it, and that is going to be it. Wow, Queso able to push up and over at the right time, catch a bunch of teams fighting on top of the mountain to come out with that chicken dinner. That was a very interesting ending there. We really were not sure who was gonna come out ahead as the number one team, but I have to say, it felt like Team Queso was last on my list, and boy, did they prove me wrong, taking out lots of big names there to pick up the chicken dinner here in match two. Well, able to do something they couldn't do in the first game, aggressively move center circle around six or seven, I can't remember exactly which, and hold it, and then find the right time to get some kills. And Jason, look who's second. Who's second? RRQ. <laughs> Forever the bridesmaid, never the bride, I guess, for them. <laughs> I will say this, though. I, I my entire note sheet from that last game was about Team Queso. They played so far out of the circle every single time because they knew how slow McKendie will play. They know it's going to take a long time for teams to start to go down. It's going to come down to the 7, 8 zone when we start to really narrow it down. And then around zone 7. placement points they finished eight in map number one and now they're able to come out with the chicken dinner that almost guarantees them a spot into the top eight yeah and uh, it's it's a great thing that you mentioned because you might think hey a, a team that's playing way outside and not really interacting with teams probably not going to have that many kills maybe this isn't you know the best format for them to do, do that strategy but no team peso at the end of it had eight kills which is 
And that's nothing to shake a stick at. I mean, that's a really uh, healthy amount of eliminations here, as well as picking up that chicken dinner. So Team Queso really got to shout them out. Great play. I mean, it's about the mindset of the tournament, right? We talked about, you know, playing for placements only won't win you games and won't win you, you know, tournaments. But what it will do is it'll guarantee you a top eight position into the, you know, the final day where you actually make it through to the finals, right? You start to get some money built up for yourself. I think it's really important. I mean, we saw Cloud9 do something a little bit similar. They played a little bit slower as well. Except their bombardment into the actual zone or uh, into the actual center didn't work out as well for them. They lost out on two players. Again, top falling out really early uh, in this match as well. I think they're around 13, 14 plays. This is a team who, you know, finished second in the PMCO Global Finals, and yet they have not performed so far, and now only have two matches left to do it with. I mean, they're struggling. They gotta come into tomorrow just absolutely guns blazing. They have to really take a couple of big games to really guarantee themselves one of those eighth place spots. It's, it's really shocking to see them be this disorganized. I wouldn't think just switching out one member is necessarily the main culprit, but it could be. I don't know. I, I don't I, feel like it is, but I want to call them very similar to like Team Soul, who have like really slow starts in tournaments, and then they start to ramp it up as the days go on. The problem is there's only four matches in total, so just having a bad start to the tournament means you're going to have a bad tournament overall. But you can see there the rankings from that last round.